What's going on YouTube? GS right here. So in today's video, I have five different important tips for you. If you're new to the jailbreak community, or even if you're not new to the jailbreak community, if you are a jailbreaker in general, that would basically ensure that your jailbreak experience would be a good one. Now, these are important things you have to do right after the jailbreaking. And these are things that would keep your jailbreak safe and your data safe on a jailbroken device. I'm going to start with the first one, which is basically changing the default root password. By default, every single iOS device has the same root password, root being the privileged user. Most of the important things on the device run as root, and the password is Alpine, A-L-P-I-N-E, -E, a very well-known password, and it's actually not a good idea to keep it, so I would definitely change it right after jailbreaking, and I'm going to show you how to do so. First, you need to SSH into your device. My favorite tool to do this on a Mac is basically the iPhone tunnel, which is this one here, which allows me to connect to the device. So basically, you connect it via USB, make sure OpenSSH is installed, and all I have to do is to turn the tunnel on in here and say SSH as root. And as you can see, it connects automatically and um, it's going to take a while. Now, if you get this weird error in here, like I did in my case, which is basically saying, warning, remote host identification has changed. All I have to do is to copy this value in here with the known hosts, say RM, RF and that value in there. And now you can connect. As you can see from here, you say yes. And there we go. Now, as I said, the default root password is Alpine, A-L-P-I-N-E. I am basically connected and I can do whatever I want on the phone. Now, this is basically a security vulnerability for your device. And if you are connected with your jailbroken device on an exposed network, somebody might be able to connect as root on your device and run commands and steal data because you have the default password. So in order to change it, all you have to do is to run the password command. So pass WD. That's basically the command. And once you run, it's going to ask you for a new password for the root user. And now my default root password has changed. A very, very simple command. You just run passwd and you type the new password and then retype it. And that would change it and basically close one of the vulnerabilities a jailbroken device has. The next very important thing you have to do after jailbreaking your device is to set your nonce generator from your blobs. And of course, saving your SHSH blobs. This would allow you to downgrade or restore in the future to the same iOS version in case you break it somehow with a bad tweak or you somehow manage to make your device no longer power on. And trust me, that is actually happening quite often in the jailbreak community. There are tweaks that may go wrong and they may make your device to no longer power on. And if that happens and you do not have a known setter and you did not set the generator, and of course, if you do not have the blob saved, you would be forced to upgrade to whatever is the latest version available and chances are it's very likely not jailbroken and you would have to wait a while for a new jailbreak to be created however if you set these you would basically be able to downgrade to the same iOS version again, even if it's no longer signed by Apple, and you can jailbreak right away. You can basically use GeoSetter on iOS 12 all the way up to iOS 12.4 by downloading the IPA file in here. I have a video on how to set your nonce, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Most people running the Uncover have the 0x111, basically 16 ones generator in here, but yours may be different, and if you're running Chimera, you have a different generator, so make sure to check inside your blog to see what generator you have. I'm going to show you how to set one right now on the device. So using my tool, which is basically GeoSetter that I created, it's actually quite easy to set the nonce. All you have to do is to open the tool after you install it with CD Impactor, and you have to set the nonce in here. Now, if you do not have the hex 111 16.1s uh, generator in there inside your blob and you have a different value, you can type it in there in the field. But if you have the uh, hex 16 ones, you can just press in here and it will paste that automatically. And then of course you can press set nonce now. And once that is done and says done, you're basically safe and you can downgrade to that particular version, which is actually quite good. So as you can see in here, it says done. So now the generator from my SHSH blob is set, which means that I'm able to downgrade to iOS 12.4 in this case. This is the nonce from my 12.4 blob even when 12.4 will no longer be signed so in case something happens to my jailbreak and my device no longer powers on and it's in a boot loop i can fix it and be on the same ios version which is actually quite crucial if you want to keep your jailbreak now the uncover can also do that uncover has a field for the nonce in here in the settings so you have to press in here on the uh, gear and of course you have to scroll all the way down and it has in here a field for the generator and it can set it in there as well so yeah that's how you do it pretty simple and it can save your jailbreak the next thing is 
is actually something many people overlook and that is doing iTunes backups frequently. Now you may find this funny but if you don't do backups you may end up actually losing your data because a jailbroken device is actually much more prone to data corruption and of course to simply bootlooping which can result in your data being lost. Now of course when you install tweaks some of them may not be trustworthy and some of them may actually not be compatible and if one of them is not compatible and have to actually destroy data on your device it may end up in your device no longer powering on and only showing the Apple logo. Now that is called a boot loop, which is basically an unrecoverable state where all your data is basically lost because you have to restore your device to whatever is the latest version. Now if you did what I told you in my previous part, which is basically setting the nonce generator in there and you have your saved SHSH blobs, you may be able to restore to the same iOS version you are having and of course jailbreak, but that doesn't preserve your data. So doing frequent backups in iTunes is actually crucial when you're on jailbroken devices because as I said, things can go wrong and also it's important to encrypt your iPhone backups with a password when you're doing them. For example, I'm going to put a password right now and um, this is actually quite important because if you set a password, iTunes would be able to basically backup the entire device including passwords and health data, home kit data, applications data and so on. So when you restore that backup, it will contain all your applications and all your data and your accounts already signed in, your messages and so on. It will basically be like nothing happened. So regular iPhone backups, especially encrypted ones, combined with regular saving of your SHSH blobs and setting the generator basically helps you to recover your device from a fatal state like a boot loop and have your data back as if nothing happened. And try Trust me, it happened to me before and it's no pleasure to lose all your photos, your contacts, messages, apps and so on. It's even more unpleasant if you have codes for various accounts, for example Google Authenticator which generates codes and of course that can actually have you locked out of your accounts if you're not careful. So back up your device regularly. The next very important tip is to actually install Falsa right away. Now you may not find Falsa very useful, it's just a file manager and you may only use it once in a while but it's actually very very important and you can fix a lot of things on your device by just having rootfs access with a file manager. Now it's often the case that Cydia would just not start or it would start but it would not install things or you paste a YouTube link instead of a repo on Cydia and it would crash the Cydia out. And the only way to fix it is through Falsa. You go ahead in there and remove a couple of files. And usually this kind of guides on how to fix that and that and that are available but they tell you you need Falsa. But then how can you install Falsa at that point if your Cydia is no longer working? So as you can see it's better to have it installed and of course to have it ready in case you need it. It's that kind of a tool that you better not need but it's better to have in there somewhere in a utilities folder for when you need it because by the time you need it it's probably too late to install it since Cydia often crashes and has issues that can be fixed with Falsa. And the fifth and last tip is installing a terminal. Now, as I said, most of the commands, for example, the passwd command we ran at the beginning of the video can be run via SSH. And it's actually recommended to run them via SSH because you can type faster on a computer keyboard. But what if you're nowhere near a computer and you need to run a command in order to fix your device? For example, Cydia not working or Cydia giving weird errors or any other kind of fix that actually involves running a command. Well, having a terminal application like this one in here allows you to run any command you want right from the device without doing any SSH, which is actually quite fine because you're able to just type the command and run it with no problem. And this would basically be very useful if you're nowhere near a computer, but you still need to run commands. And as I said, it can fix your jailbreak in an emergency, but it's too late if your Cydia doesn't work to install the terminal at that point. So the terminal is another kind of application that you better not need, but it's good to have it in there alongside with Falsa, just in case something goes wrong and you need to fix it on the field where there is absolutely no computer whatsoever available. This would basically allow you to run any command that you would be able to run via SSH, so you can definitely fix your jailbreak by following various tutorials, by following various tutorials, 
materials which require you to run commands. So definitely install it. The new Term 2 is basically the uh, terminal available for iOS 12 and iOS 11 devices. Install it from Cydia and just save it somewhere in there. Because as I said, it can help you fix your jailbreak one day. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys. Those are the tips. I hope they help. And of course, if you follow them, you should have a pretty good jailbreak experience. Thank you for watching. I am Geosnow and till next time, peace out.